Hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Today what I'm going to be doing is revisiting my soft proofing video that I did a while ago, probably about 18 months ago. So I want to have another look at it because personally I don't think I've quite mastered it and I just want to have a look at how I can use it better to get better results. And I think in my other video kind of I explained what it was but I will have a little bit of a recap of that as well. And I wanna go through how we should use soft proofing and have a look at it. And to see in this latest version of Lightroom that's just been released towards the end of the year here in 2021, to see if anything has been improved and if it actually works. And if I can get a soft proofed image to actually match what's coming out of the printer as well. Because as you all know, I'm a massive fan of printing something actually kind of see how it comes out of the printer to actually have a look and work from there. However, I want to see about the soft proofing because I know a lot of you kind of say about soft proofing how wonderful it is. I think it has its place, but I always say it gets you about 40%, 50% of the way there. But I actually want to get a lot closer to that and see if I can get a really good result while soft proofing. Now, before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. As always, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Just click the subscribe button below. And also, if you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments below. I, and please go onto our website and use the code FSYouTube15. And that will give you 15% off our range of papers. And hopefully you'll be able to get some papers to try out everything you've learned in this video. Okay, so let's have a look at soft proofing and how and what it can do for us. Now, as some of you know, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with soft proofing. I usually call it the foggy button and it kind of gives me okay results, I suppose, but the idea is of soft proofing, for those of you who don't, who don't know what soft proofing is, is it's the idea that within your software, be it Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One, or any other make of kind of editing software out there, the idea is you can apply like a proof over the top by using the ICC profile for that type of paper you're using. And it applies the proof over the top so it in theory will show you on the screen how the print is going to look when it actually comes out your printer. I have slight issues with this. My issues are that you're still displaying it through a semi-matte type of screen if you've got a BenQ like the one behind me here or a glossy screen if you're working say on an iMac or something like that. So that is going to cause a massive discrepancy and Photoshop, as best it can, or Lightroom, or whatever you're using, can the best it can try and emulate how that glossy screen's going to look on a matte paper or such, it's just not going to do it. it. It's going to fall short a little bit. So it has useful practicalities, but it also has massive limitations. I think what soft proofing is, is a way of managing your expectation a little bit better. If you look at soft proofing and you can see a little bit of fall off of contrast or the color is going to look a little bit different, so then it almost subconsciously goes into us to kind of train us to expect that a little bit because there is going to be a little bit on fall off on say matte papers or certain gloss or brighter papers. It's just going to look a little bit different because the color temperature is going to be different, the white point of the paper and such. So this will affect things. But soft proofing will help us to do this. And it should help us also to try and dial out a lot of these discrepancies as well. So because we can actually see it on the screen. And I have to say Lightroom is really good at this because you can put the images side by side and you can have a look and you can actually see it happening in front of you. So let me take you into Lightroom and how I would go about altering the pictures to try and make them look a little bit better as they come out of the printer that first time. And also I've got some prints as well that I've made. So we're gonna have a look and actually print it 
and see how it'll look. Now the paper I'm gonna be using today is Platinum Etching, a beautiful paper from us. Slight texture to it, but really works well for wildlife. And I've picked a lovely picture of a squirrel to have a look at. Let's dive into the computer and dive into Lightroom and get started. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Now I've got my lovely picture up here of my squirrel. Now I'm gonna go into the development tab because this is where we're going to do all our soft proofing and all our edits. Now, within Lightroom, there's a lovely little tick box just down the bottom underneath the picture here, just a little bit towards the left, just off center. And this box says soft proofing. So when we tick this, what will happen is the picture will slightly change. And then also what will happen is we get another options or other box, should I say, pop up underneath the histogram. And at the top it says soft proofing. Now we've got a histogram here and we've also got a button that says create proof copy that we will come back to in a second. Now underneath here, we've got our profile option. Now this is where we can select the paper we'd like to profile it on. So, so smooth cotton or a luster. And you can see each time I'm doing this, the proof is slightly changing and the colors are slightly changing on the proof. Now you need to, in here, we need to select the paper we are going to be using to profile. So I'm actually printing on the platinum etching on the Pro 1000. So I'm just gonna select that. And we can also change our rendering intent as well to perceptual or relative. And the idea is this will give us an idea of kind of how it's going to print when it comes out. So as you can see, there's a bit of difference there. So I'm going to pop mine on relative because that's what I'm going to use. Now underneath here, there is the simulate paper and ink button. If we press this, the picture goes really foggy and really kind of flat. Now this is trying to emulate the paper's white point and the, how the ink's gonna react with that. Now this is the bit I call the foggy button really because it really goes too far. It almost puts this horrible kind of, kind of sheen over or kind of, it just puts this kind of fogginess over the top, which isn't ideal. So I always say just keep that one unticked. Now the idea is now we would re-edit this picture with this proof over the top using our sliders and things down here as well and our colors and everything in our development tab. So we'd get it how we would like it to look on the screen and then we can print it and hopefully it will look a little bit better. However, in Lightroom, there is an option to compare a before and after. Now, it is just next to where it says soft proofing, there is a Y and Y button. If we press this, you will see it comes up with proof preview and a current in here. So what we can do, we can click on it and we can zoom in and we can see the differences. So there's a slight difference in the brown in the top here. If I just move across to the leaves, there's a slight difference as well in the greens there. Now, there is a few other options in here. If we just click on it again, it gives us a view where we can, gives us the whole picture, but there's a divide down the middle. So we can actually then kind of have a look at the befores and afters in here as well. So we have a before and an after picture when we've selected this Y option in here. Now the idea being now is if we make a change, say to the green, what will happen is it will pop up and say a just change to a proof copy for us. And it's created a virtual copy. So any of our adjustments will be saved in this virtual copy. So we'll have our original and then we'll have our virtual copy here. Now in here, what we can do is we've got our picture on the left hand side. We can change this just in a in the before state just down here at the minute it's current state i'm just going to change that to original picture and then the left hand side changes to what's called a master so that is before the soft proof as we can see we do have a difference when we when we soft proof what is going to happen is color is going to slightly change in here 
So I would like just to match that green up just by using the, the slider. And then we can just try and change the green a little bit in here and change the colors so we can get them looking a little bit better. Okay. And we just make these adjustments. Well, I'm just playing around with the luminance at the minute on here. You can also use the, um, the drag tool. So we can click on this little circle here and we can just drag up and down with our uh, sliders here just to see if we can get that green matching because the color is just going to change very slightly. And we'll just zoom out again and just have another look at another part of the picture. So the log here, that's pretty okay, it's not too bad. And we can just go back in. Now I'm doing all these adjustments globally, but what we can do is you can do these locally as well. So you can apply some brushes and radials and things in here. I'm just looking at the fur here as well. Looks pretty good. And the idea is we just have a look through, just see about making this marry up a little bit. I'm just gonna click on the Y again and it comes up with my split view here. This is where I can zoom in, like just go across. On the right of this line, we've got our preview and then on the left, we've got our master version as well. Now I have to say, it doesn't look too bad. So those are little adjustments that we need to make. These aren't gonna be massive adjustments we are doing in here. It's just gonna be a little tweak. You can see my adjustments here are very slight, just to bring in and just have a look and see if there's any differences in the picture with color and things. So that's where the idea of soft proofing comes in. We can also use it for gamut warnings. If, if we click on the paper icon in the top right here, what we can do is turn on and off gamut warnings and that will give us a warning to see if anything is out of gamut. In this picture, it doesn't look like it is. But if I just say move the blacks right down, you can start to see the red marks coming up here. Now this is telling me that is out of gamma and it's going to be a very blocked scene and it can't produce that that certain amount of color that kind of shade of green i believe it is here so the idea then would be we can just bring that back until it is in with the range of the printer and now what we would do is we would go and click on the print option and we would just print this and hopefully those colors should produce as we're expecting them to. Always remembering to apply the profile in the color management option here, and also to turn off color management in the printer driver. So let's get some prints done, and I'll have a look and see if soft proofing has worked. Okay, so now I've printed the prints off, I'm now ready to have a look and see if there's any difference between the two and see if I can get these matching up a little bit better. So the first one I've got here is my original. Now, this was printed without any soft proofing and there is slight differences. The greens have changed very slightly at the top here. And to be honest, without my big video viewing light on up here, it does look a little bit dark. So it is a little bit, but then once I've put the light on, it seems absolutely fine. It really does brighten it up a lot. So it kind of leads me on to thinking about how you view your prints as well and how important that is. Because uh, if I turn my light off here, then these do look really dark and muddy. So we really do need a really nice light to view them under. Now, comparing that to the soft proofed version over the top here, where I increased the kind of sorted out the greens a little bit, increased some things, brought it up just ever so slightly, brought the contrast in and things. This is a bit of a closer match to my screen behind me here. I would say though, it still isn't right. My screen does seem a little bit warmer. Um, so that might need a little bit of a calibration or just changing some things in there. But comparing that to my non-soft proof version, so the greens do look a little bit more natural in here. So they don't look so kind of vibrant in here. They look a little bit more kind of subdued, but 
more in keeping with the scene as well, which is really important. Both though, I have to say, are great prints. I'd be happy with both of them, to be honest. But when you're comparing it to the screen, there is still differences. Editing on the screen is fine if you're gonna be viewing prints on the screen, and there's nothing wrong with that. But as we're talking about printing here, if we edit for print, we need to do that print. And that's where that hard proofing comes in. Soft proofing still, I think, even after doing this little test and having a look at these, I think I'm better at it myself. I've kind of learned a little bit more about it and what it can do and these little tests I've done, but still it's not, still not 100% there. Um, and I think I would still rather just do a little test print. It doesn't have to be big. Watch my hard proofing videos. And if you're on a Canon as well, you've got that lovely pattern print in the professional printer layout software that will do it for you. I'll put all the links to these in the description below for you. But for me, there's nothing like just doing that print and having that in your hand so you can have a look at it. Because to be honest, if I just turned off the screen and I took my first print I've done here, I'd be happy with that. That looks great. See, I'd be happy with that. There's nothing wrong with it. It really does look good. When I compare it to the soft proof version, I would probably, I'd probably uh, actually, I'd probably go towards the soft proof version. So, but there's still work to do. It's done, I've probably, I used to, at the start of the video, I said it needs to get like 40 or 50% there. I think now, I'm at that 60-70% because I've kind of had a look at it a bit more and kind of looked and compared and used it a little bit more. So this is great. So I'd be still really happy with this print. The problems come is when you start comparing to the screen, I think. That's where kind of things happen and your expectations change. And like I said at the start, soft briefing is there almost to manage expectation. I think that is its key part of what it does for you. Well, I hope that's been useful and you don't mind me kind of just expressing my thoughts on soft proofing. And as always, please don't forget to subscribe and don't forget that voucher code, which is FSYouTube15. And I'll just pop it in the description below as well. So just use that to get 15% off photo speed papers. And please put your comments below. But I think to take from that, what I would say is soft proofing, it can get you pretty close but there's nothing like, especially if you're using matte papers, there's nothing like pressing that print button and having a look. But please do little prints. Don't do big ones because you're going to be using lots of paper and lots of ink. Just do some little prints just to have a test and see what's happening. And also have a look at the print and make sure you're happy. That is the main thing. If you're happy, if you're happy with the screen image, fantastic. The print is going to be a different animal and a different version of that print. So what we need to do is we do need to look at the print and make sure we're happy. As the photographer, as the artist, as the illustrator, the main thing is you are happy. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.